Welcome to Thinkin, a podcast series by Kautilya School of Public Policy. Hello and welcome to Thinkin, a podcast series by Kautilya School of Public Policy. Today in this episode of Indite 75, we will look into the topic evolution of Panchayati Raj and its present relevance. And to discuss this with me, I am delighted to introduce our special guest, Mr. S M Vijayanand, one of the finest mind to speak on this topic. Mr. S M Vijayanand is a former Chief Secretary to the Government of Kerala. In the past, he has served as the Secretary, Ministry of Panchayati Raj, Government of India; Additional Secretary, Ministry of Rural Development, Government of India, among other positions; and spearheaded Rajiv Gandhi Drinking Water Mission. Uh, Minister of Sanitation, Government of India, from 1992 to 1996. He has also conceptualized and operationalized very well-known Kudamshiri model, a women's self-help group movement in the state of Kerala. He is known for his passion of democratic decentralization at the grassroots level. Thank you very much, sir. We are delighted to have you in the studio. So, uh, sir, uh, today we see that my first question is very important because uh, we are told that India is being urbanized. That people are migrating to the cities there is in rapid urbanization and we say that new cities are coming in so in this context do you think that is there any relevance for panchayati raj as many people are going to shift into urban area and not just that governance shift is also for urban india so what do you think this change actually i personally feel there is a wrong paradigm okay instead of big cities developing hmm. the whole of the country should develop hmm. that is the idea of gandhi ji hmm. later scientifically explained by Our former president, Dr. Abdul Kalam. Yeah. That is, if you develop rural areas, mm. there will be no rush into the urban areas, mm. and life will be much better. The quality of life will be better. Yeah. Not that very interior, uh, mountainous areas can be suddenly mm-hmm. converted into this, mm. but basic facilities have been to be can be provided e- elsewhere. Mm-hmm. The classic example is Kerala. Kerala, yeah. The town populations are coming down. Mm. The suburban populations are increasing. Soon it will be a two third of Kerala would be one major but livable urban. conglomeration mm-hmm. so i think that's the way forward which means there has to be continued and probably greater stress on the panchayats, panchayats. because you need to provide facilities mm-hmm. there you need to provide more than facilities mm-hmm. job opportunities mm-hmm. and now with this kind of modern job market you can w- sit anywhere and work yeah. so i think the focus now sh- should go back mm-hmm. to st- strengthening these kind of livelihoods and basic mm-hmm. facilities in panchayats initially in the suburban panchayats mm-hmm. later moving into the interior you made a very interesting point do you think any kind of reverse migration will happen from educated youth like job opportunities are like remote so do you think that people will go back it's very much a possibility a real possibility. real possibility i don't see any trend now uh-huh. but it's a possibility possibility and uh-huh. much more than that people commuting from about 100 kilometers mm-hmm. into the town mm-hmm. and going back which yeah. means the rural yeah. areas will yeah. get covered So let's uh, go back to the time of independence. We have this panch for panchayati raj, the shape that has it has taken in the years later followed. We have this philosophical underpinning of Gandhi and Ambedkar. Two contradictory ideas. Uh, Doctor Ambedkar found rural society very rigid, casteist, and Gandhi has some people cynic- cynically say that he has romanticized villages. So what what what's your opinion about the Gandhi Ambedkar divide? Yeah, I have studied that in great detail, uh-huh. and uh, in a sense. Panchayat Raj in India has been a tale of missed opportunities, mm-hmm. right from 1947, mm-hmm. not probably even till now. Uh, the basic initially we could have got in got Panchayat Raj into the constitution mm-hmm. and the third tier of governance, mm-hmm. proper local mm-hmm. governance. But as you mentioned, that unfortunate mm-hmm. uh, divide of mm-hmm. opinion mm-hmm. between Gandhi ji and mm-hmm. Ambedkar. But when you look back, both of them were right. Mm-hmm. India is, was feudal, still has a lot of the feudal yeah. elements in many of the rural areas. Uh, and at that time it was very bad caste system mm. was very bad mm. but how was gandhi ji right who were india's freedom fighters mm. a large number of freedom fighters were from rural areas mm. farmers workers mm. students lawyers teachers mm. after india got freedom where did they go they went back to their villages to continue their vocation yeah. just imagine if those persons had become the heads of the elected panchayats in the 40s mm. and early 50s india would have been different india would have been caste and other things would have come down because at least the first generation of people after independence didn't believe in caste mm-hmm. or didn't believe in religious divide mm-hmm. they wanted a developing a common mm-hmm. uh, society mm-hmm. but that opportunity we lost mm-hmm. so we lost a generation by the time politics and other thing had yeah. become the usual routinized yeah. 
So I remember last time when you came, you use the word beauty of panchayats. So tell us, tell us why do you think, why do, you, why did you use this word beauty of panchayats? The beauty of panchayat means it offers mm -hmm. local uh, touch. Mm -hmm. You know the granular realities of the village, and people can go and directly interact with the panchayat. Mm -hmm. So it's like almost face-to-face -face mm -hmm. governance. That is very difficult. Whatever, however good the state government or central government mm -hmm. is, your access is very limited. Yes, and you don't ha engage. Mm. That's what they call the surface area of contact mm. is very minimal yes. and is very short and brief. Yeah. But here, there's a relationship that is coming. So that makes it uh, better in a governance sense. But more importantly, not that all panjais are good. Yeah. A lot of corruption, a lot of inefficiency. Yeah. I admit that. But there will be a force supplying. When demand comes, you yeah. have to respond. Yeah. You can't run away, yeah. particularly when the demand is direct yeah. from the people close mm. by. So, uh, coming back to the question of decentralization, this is very important because we had uh, 30 years, exactly 30 years ago, we had this 73rd amendment and even 74 amendment as well. So, through your assessment, because you served for a very long period of time, you experienced Panchayat eras from very close quarters. How do you assess the democratic decentralization process in the last three decades? Has it been successful or how can we assess the success of the democratic decentralization? The constitution it, it, is, it has not been as successful as envisaged in the constitution. Mm -hmm. In a sense, we have not created institutions of self-government, mm -hmm. which the constitution envisages. Mm -hmm. And for local development and social justice, mm -hmm. it's not happened in most parts of India. At the same time, first 12 years, practically nothing happened. States came out with their laws. They just complied with those things. Mm -hmm. Barring states like, initially it was Madhya Pradesh, but then Madhya Pradesh played out. Kerala took off. It's still yeah. continuing. West Bengal, Karnataka had Panchayat Raj even before that. Mm. And I don't think they went forward after mm. the constitution, but they maintained whatever mm. was there earlier. The early starters, Maharashtra, mm. of course, Gujarat was again part of it. Mm. They kind of plateaued in the 70s, mm. but they still have a semblance of Panchayat mm. Raj. Post amendment, Himachal and Sikkim mm. also developed Panchayat Raj better, particularly Sikkim. So other states are. Neither here nor Sorry there. to interrupt you because you are mentioning so many states. So, do you see any pattern between small states and big no, states? There is no, there is no real, such pattern. real pattern. Karnataka yeah. is a yeah. big state and all yeah. that. Tamil Nadu is a different kind of Panjayat Raj, it's a functional Panjayat Raj. Mm -hmm. uh, so, that way I don't uh, yeah. differentiate. Then, in nine, 2005, there was a major opportunity mm -hmm. when this initially it was called National Rural Employment Guarantee Act, right. later Mahatma Gandhi, mm -hmm. was added. That gave a lot of powers to the panchayats and resources. 50% mm -hmm. of the works should be got done by the panchayats. Yes. And the whole planning is in the Gram Sabha. So, which means uh, panchayats got resources for the first time with little bit of human resources also. Mm -hmm. Some data entry operator and technical assistant. But in large parts of India, this was only on paper. The powers were with the bureaucracy. Yeah. They decided what to do and panchayats passed the resolution. Mm -hmm. But I think one third of India, the panchayats asserted. Then another big opportunity, as rather unexpected, was in 2015. Mm. Now, before that, I should mention in 2004, the Ministry of Panchayat Raj was Form. created. Mm. Uh, uh, earlier, it was a small section in the yeah. Ministry of Rural Development. Mm. That gave a lot of hopes. Mm. But I personally feel it should have been a single ministry renamed as Ministry of Panchayat Raj. Okay. Instead of Ministry of Rural Development. Yeah. So, splitting it actually affected resources are with the Ministry of Rural Development and the responsibility is with the Ministry of Panchayat. So, this bifurcation it didn't work? Didn't work. It Sh should have been renaming and repositioning of this. Okay. But now, in hindsight, we'll have a lot of wisdom. Mm -hmm. Maybe at that point of time, that was a decision. Another, as I said, another unexpected development was the award mm -hmm. of the 14th uh, Finance Commission, Union Finance yeah. Commission. They gave 2 lakh crore plus exclusive to the Gram Panchayat. So, so resource staffed. Gram Panjais for the first time mm. got it, but of course they were not prepared otherwise. Human resources, other systems and all that, they were weak. Then a small entry was made called GPDP, mm -hmm. where every Panchais prepare a plan. It's a kind of a participatory budget, mm. may not be participatory everywhere, but Panchais prepare a kind of action plan mm. for the first time. So 255,000 odd Panchais are preparing this mm. uh, every year. Mm. So that was a big bonanza. And fortunately, a lot of people feared that 15 Finance Commission may whittle it down mm. because it was the 14th thing in terms of real uh, F, uh, work by panchayats. In many parts, it was not very encouraging, though they did spend the money and create some assets. But uh, 15 Finance Commission has persisted with it, mm. which means there is there are resources. Now the focus should be on human resources mm. systems. Mm. 
So I think you you are talking about finance commission. I think you were a part of also finance commission at the Kerala state finance yeah, commission. Yeah, I, I was part so of two finance commissions yeah. and chaired the last finance yeah. commission. So what do you, how do you assess the role of state finance commission for granting funds? Or this is one feature of the constitution, hmm. which has not been implemented by most states. <laughs> in, in fact, it's a violation of the constitution. Yeah. As per the constitution, every state ought to have constituted the sixth state finance commission hmm. in 2019. But at that point of time, only six states did so. Okay. And I don't think any other state, maybe one more state has come in now. Mm -hmm. Many states are in the fourth, fifth, and some of them even third mm -hmm. state finance commission. Mm -hmm. It's a flagrant violation of the constitution. But fortunately, the 15th finance commission has said, I think uh, if the finance commissions are not constituted by 2023, mm -hmm. they, they will not be, states will not be mm -hmm. eligible for grants. Mm -hmm. At least that should push the states to yeah. constitute the finance commission. Yes. So you also mentioned about the bureaucracy. Uh, is it inertia or they don't want to let go their powers when a district collector is sitting at the district level and he's it's a very good question i've been reflecting on that normally we blame politicians for <laughs> not giving powers yeah. but here I, I don't want dramatic powers to be given it can't yeah. be given in many states yeah. but whatever powers you have mm. build your capacity enable the panchayats to mm. uh, use them properly mm -hmm. i'm afraid it's not being pushed actively in most parts of india mm -hmm. that is a bureaucratic Inertia. inertia and then you're not and I have found bureaucrats are not very comfortable dealing with panchayats hmm. they're elected in a sense political political though officially they may not have party identity at the gram panchayat level hmm. so many a time the not the top bureaucrats hmm. not the collector hmm. just below them they're not very comfortable dealing with elected governments and, and, and others they're not very BDOs mm -hmm. they're not very comfortable maybe that's the reason mm -hmm. why they are not being pushed but I must also say if there is a political will, decentralization is essentially political. Hmm. It can develop, it can happen only when there is a strong political signal. Mm -hmm. We need to decentralize, we need to strengthen. Mm -hmm. So in that absence, officers are also not yeah. active. Yeah. So one more question just I wanted to ask you about the related to Gram Panchayats. We see that there is a lot of enthusiasm for digital India and data driven public policy. Uh, now, we were also discussing in the classroom that people are saying that record keeping at the Gram Panchayat remains obsolete or it is very poor. So, if record keeping is not happening properly, we may not get the true picture of the tr schemes and policies that are being implemented at the grassroots level. So, what what, you, what is the issue with this record keeping and or they are not competent enough? So, I came across one article which was talking about that the capacity building is very poor with the Gram Panchayat. So, I just would like to know your take on this. Yeah. Now, first, use of digital tools for record keeping. Mm. That should come slightly later. Mm -hmm. First, you start functioning. Mm -hmm. Become a local government. Mm -hmm. Have a relationship with the people. And at the Gram Panchayat level, I can tell you, there are no records required as far as people are concerned. Mm -hmm. They know what will happen. So, more than, I'm not saying records should not be there, records should be there. Mm -hmm. After all, you're spending public money and mm -hmm. mo uh, taxpayers' money. But accountability, social accountability, mm -hmm. where there is transparency, where people can know what is happening. Mm -hmm. That's the most powerful thing. Once they know that, then accounts will be kept properly. But just digitizing. Now, it's practically digitized on paper. Mm -hmm. You have excellent softwares which, where everything is digitized, but people don't use it, people can't use it. Mm. It's not in the common. So, first, you get into that proper functioning through much more than registers, transparency, mm. processes. This is very important. In Gram Panjais, processes are very important. Yes. So that everybody knows what is happening. Yeah. Then you get them into some kind of systems and then digitize, but digitize in a way, well, the big problem with digitization I've seen, I've been in rural development, mm. it's all for the top authorities. Mm. It's not digitization for the people. Okay. So, there has to be a democratic element in digitization. Yeah. That, if that comes, then people will push for it. Mm -hmm. Now, you are saying records are not good. Why? The BDO needs the records, the collector needs the records. Mm. Nobody is saying the people need the records. Yeah. The moment you bring it into people needing records and this will give you a very, very mm. speaking kind of mm. data through IT. Mm. then there will be demand for that. So, when you say processes, are you talking about the human interface? Yeah, human interface. interface yeah. And also where people know then systems, discussing with yes. people, getting their priorities, yeah. getting their norms in. I think in that kind of uh, small setup, human interface is quite more important. Yeah, more, more important. important yeah. And we saw it during COVID. Huh. No. Ultimately, the, though panchayats are weak mm. in large parts of mm. India, mm. what saved the day was this partnership between the self-help groups mm. and panchayats. They yeah. took on the responsibilities, yeah. even though they were not formally interested in mm. them, and saved the day. Mm. 
So let us just talk about the electoral politics at the Panchayati Raj. There is a lot of means I would say great amount of enthusiasm compared to the urban counterparts. When we say the voter turnout, uh, we say that 80, 90 percent voting is being done in the Panchayati Raj. So in terms of enthusiasm, in terms of responsibility, voters are there. They are every election they are voting. That is that, that's not there in urban India. We see yeah. that urban India is lagging behind. But uh, there are some new experiments that are being done in state like Maharashtra where a direct sarpanj, uh, like a kind of presidential form of election. How do you assess that form? And because sometimes that may get uh, eroded by the identity politics that may not work because caste system even today is still strong. Yeah. I can give you my personal opinion. Hmm. This presidential system, though it's provided for in the constitution, hmm. is not very effective. Hmm. Ultimately, it's collective rule. Mm. That's the meaning of panchayat. Mm. At least five, now it's much more. Mm. You sit and decide. Mm. Technically, of course, the president also listens to the Senate and House mm. of Representatives in the US. But here, you have to sit together mm. and you are the first among equals. Mm -hmm. I think that's the spirit of panchayat raj. Mm. Direct uh, election means you become very powerful. Others are yeah. not required. So, it's, I don't think it's very healthy. It's very healthy. Uh, uh, apart from panchayat is a primary unit of the state. Apart from that, there are community level uh, institutions are emerging and you are also pioneer of the Kudum Shri model like SHG. Yeah. So how these new institutions, not just SHG, but like farmers producing organization, they will, do you think they will influence? Because they are collective groups, they are coming together for common interest. And how could they channelize the development at the grassroots level? Could you just speak on your experience? Yeah. Farmers producer organizations, they are on most, they are not very powerful now mm -hmm. in the sense they are not being formed across the mm -hmm. country like dairy cooperatives. They are, they are here and there of differing strengths. But SSGs exist almost all over the country. Mm -hmm. Officially, I think they will be touching one crore soon, mm -hmm. uh, the number of SSGs. They should have a working partnership, a mm -hmm. formal working partnership with the panchayats and both will gain. Mm -hmm. What are the deficiencies of panchayat? Lack of participation, lack of demand, lack of accountability. Mm -hmm. If SSGs work with panchayats, not under the panchayats, mm. they work as two equal. One is people's democracy, the other is yeah. political democracy. Once you start working with each other, a relationship forms and many of the so-called shortcomings of panchayats can be addressed. And what do the SSGs gain? Mm -hmm. They understand how power is exercised, mm -hmm. how demand can be effective, how resources can be uh, uh, properly allocated. So it becomes a win-win situation. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, uh, it's become it's happened spontaneously. Now many SSG members get elected uh, as uh, panchas and sarpanchas mm -hmm. in most parts of mm -hmm. India, even where uh, panchayats are not very strong or even where SSGs are not very strong. Is it because of account of their... Uh, because their visibility, they are more articulate, they know things yeah. and uh, they can speak. So even political parties, when they nominate, mm -hmm. they choose uh, mm -hmm. SSG members. Mm -hmm. For example, in Kerala, Two-third of the women elected members mm -hmm. from all political parties, Kerala has political panchayats, yeah. uh, they, they are from the Kudumbashree fold. Mm -hmm. Two-third, which means one-third of the elected members are from the Kudumbashree Kudum fold. And see how they can influence. Yeah. That's the huge potential. Yeah. Uh, with related to that, I just wanted to ask you about the question of the representation, uh, representation of women. Now, we have this representation in some states about 50 percent. Yeah. Uh, that, uh, that has not happened at the national level, that bill is pending in. So how Panchayati Raj is being shaped by the representation of women and not just by that, but other communities are getting representation. So I think that has been positive, hmm. uh, basically SCST, OBC I think some hmm. states have, mm -hmm. not all states, and women. Mm -hmm. Women is 50 percent in most of the states now, yes. barring a few states. And it's anecdotal, I don't think anybody has made a mm -hmm. uh, deep study. The women's uh, Panchayat presidents have performed well, where they have been, uh, that's very important, where they have been allowed to perform. In okay. large parts of central India with feudal culture, you will have Sarpanch Padis. Yeah. Not even central India, even Maharashtra and others, you know, yeah, the Padi concept. Uh, not very much uh, in Kerala or uh, West Bengal to that extent, where maybe some male politician will mm -hmm. take over a little bit of this role. But that is not a healthy concept. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a very, that is actually demeaning the women. Demeaning, it's yeah. disempowering the women. Yeah. So that has to be a priority now to ensure. But there I see SSGs giving a lot of promise. Mm -hmm. A lady who has come through the SSG will naturally assert her identity mm -hmm. as the president. Yes. Uh, another question that just I just wanted to ask you about you in the previous answer you mentioned about the corruption. So good governance this topic has always been there. What do you think what what is good governance mean for Panchayat? Good governance in Panchayat one phrase will be accountable. Mm -hmm. They are accountable to the people mm -hmm. and accountability means 
you have to answer mm -hmm. take decisions in according to a process and you are answerable to every decision yes. and everybody can see how the, it was decided who got the benefit what was the norm used mm -hmm. so that is more possible in the panchayat context than with the higher level bureaucracy mm -hmm. at least theoretically mm -hmm. which is why good governance panchayats can have and mm -hmm. another good governance aspect is participation mm -hmm. naturally it's participatory mm -hmm. people know at least mm -hmm. even if they may not come and discuss so there are a lot of good governance features built into yes. the structure of a panchayat yeah. so another important thing is that uh, cooperative movement has been in decline even in maharashtra and karnataka but th there was a time in 90s and 80s the cooperative movement shaped the development of rural area yeah. so how can we revive the cooperative movement and how what can panchayats do reviving the co co how did cooperatives collapse politicization politicization capture. yeah capture mm. very difficult to free them mm. though laws and others can come it really can't informally you can mm. capture it informally mm -hmm. formally laws can keep up for keep up political parties i think but i gr see great promise in the amul model mm. where is very purposive you do it there's a chain moving up and there i see lot of potential i'm very surprised why is not being pushed to that level fpo fpo fpos could be on the amul model amul model of course they are of course amul most of them are small producers here there are large farmers and yeah. practically agriculture labor but still if you bring it on those lines mm -hmm. probably cooperatives will be more purposeful yeah. and capture could be reduced yeah. so i just wanted to this 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 is going to be a last question and we will wind up uh, now we see that public policy schools like outilla many students they have lot of interest they want to start their career by working at the grassroots and panchayati raj what would be your advice to those students who have been graduating in public policy and they want to go at the grassroots level and they may not have exposure because since they lived in urban india yeah what is your advice to them one possibility is to work in csr projects which are a plenty now mm -hmm. and most of them are working at the panchayat level mm -hmm. so learning panchayat raj is very important mm -hmm. because panchayat raj mm -hmm. i don't think any state allows interns in panchayat mm -hmm. raj unless you want to go and study mm -hmm. uh, so but there are a lot of opportunities of working with sgs mm -hmm. the state livelihood missions have professional cadre mm -hmm. most of them are young professionals mm -hmm. but they are basically at the block but normally a block is four to six people mm -hmm. so youngsters doing public policy can go to these areas mm -hmm. and uh, just so, sorry yeah. to interrupt you will they aid or they, will they help panchayats to become competent enough yes they can they mm -hmm. can i only say they can uh, it depends on the state and mm -hmm. what a role they are giving to young professionals but something i've seen people who have worked with the panchayat with the sgs whatever job they take up in whichever company, even if it's for a big bank job or a multinational job they seem to perform better right from the entry in terms of understanding mm -hmm. so that's a big people don't realize that yeah is not that going to panchayat and doing some voluntary service mm. you gain more by working in that grassroots level situation is like the old gandhi ji coming back from yeah. south africa and learning india by going to villages yeah uh, thank you so much for thank this you. insightful uh, conversation uh, i think audience will gain a lot of uh, experiences a lot of understanding about how the panchayats work and let's hope that panchayatis in coming years will become competent and the the true democratic decentralization will happen in uh, true 